Hello everyone, you're watching the news here on Press TV. Thanks for joining us. Angry demonstrators climbed the walls of the U.S. Embassy in Cairo to voice opposition to an anti-Islam film produced by a U.S.-based Coptic Christian group. Protesters forcibly removed the American flag from the walls of the embassy. Press TV's Karen Gamaladeen tells us more. Thousands of Egyptians have gathered outside the U.S. Embassy in Cairo and have removed the American flag from the walls of the embassy to express their extreme outrage over a film being produced in the United States that is an insult to the holy prophet of Islam, Muhammad peace be upon him. Muslim scholars told Press TV that the Americans are going too far and beyond the limits and the Muslims cannot accept it anymore, especially insults. I say to the Americans to remember the history and the events as the relations between us now are not dependent on leniency, but we will get our full rights from you. As Muslims consider any depiction of the Prophet to be highly offensive, thousands of protesters furiously chanted the people are saying anyone but the Prophet. Earlier in the day, a presser was held by the supporters of Muslim cleric Omar Abdul Rahman to call for the immediate release of the blind Sheikh who has been jailed in the U.S. for more than two decades. Many Egyptians are calling for the expulsion of the American ambassador to Cairo as they are also calling on the newly elected government to have a firmer stance against the U.S. and its discriminatory policies. Anti-U.S. sentiments have flared up here in Egypt as hundreds have gathered here outside the American embassy in Cairo to denounce a movie that was produced by some Egyptian cops living in the States criticizing Prophet Mohammed. The protesters call for the expulsion of the American ambassador to Cairo. Karim Gamaleddin. Press TV, Cairo. Meanwhile, protests against the U.S. film turned violent in Libya, leaving casualties. Armed gunmen and security forces clashed at the U.S. consular office in the eastern Libyan city of Benghazi. Libya's interior ministry said one American staff member was killed in the attack and another security guard was injured. Rocket-propelled grenades were also fired at the U.S. consulate and parts of the offices have caught fire. Witnesses say the Libyan security forces withdrew as they came under heavy fire. Looters are now raiding the compound, walking off with desks, chairs and washing machines. U.S. State Department spokesman Victoria Nuland has condemned the attack. Benghazi is the origin of the uprising against former dictator Muammar Gaddafi that led to the toppling of the former regime. To tell us more about this, I'm joined from Washington by Abdul Ali Musa. He's the Imam of Masjid al-Islam in Washington. Welcome to the program, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Musa, uh, first of all, what do you think uh, the repercussions of such a rising wave of Islamophobia would be? Well, first of all, remember, uh, from the United States, we're speaking with experience. Our main enemies here is Americans. They use their military against us. Then it is the Zionist. They use the media, perception management. Then the Saudi Arabians who use their wealth and power and influence amongst Muslims. This uh, is clearly a Zionist attack, continuous Zionist attack on Islam and on Muslims. And it is done at the 9-11 period in order to what we call to adjust what is called perception management. In other words, when these people come out against Islam and us, we should choose our time and place of rebuttal. Therefore, we should have institutions ready here inside the West and outside to challenge Zionism on our terms and in our way. So here's what their goal was. Perception management was to air this program a few days ago, let the heat build up, and by today, September the 11th, the people would come out and they would uh, challenge the U.S. position. The American people and the Western people need to be educated. So we should use these opportunities to fight the battle against jahiliya and ignorance and oppression 
in our own time and our own way. What they've done here is use perception management. The American people will think, oh, these people attacked our embassy. Well, the American embassy needs to be attacked. The American policy needs to be attacked. It needs to be challenged. I say, let's challenge it in our own time, in our own way. The, the second point is this. The enemies of Islam, the Israelis, the Americans, and the Saudis are not going to stop their war against us. It will be a ongoing, continuous war calling for longevity and the ability to hold on over long periods of time. Therefore, I believe we should choose our time and our place and our method of confrontation and challenge. Indeed. And uh, I mean, the screening of this film, I mean, how, how do you relate it with the fact that it was coincided with the 9-11 anniversary? That was the purpose. Uh, like, uh, if you notice the other, uh, let's say, the Salman Rushdie affair. This was back in 89. Okay, this, this is specifically done, why? They give Salman Rushdie 820,000 pounds. That's a million and a half dollars in those days before he even wrote the book. Why? To produce uh, anxiety amongst the Muslims. But what happened was it backfired. It backfired and Muslims came to Islam in groves. Now what's happening here in America, this continuous Islamophobia has caused the Muslims to live in a state of fear and anxiety, but it is forcing them back to Islam. This Eid, some places had three, four, even five Eid prayers. The night prayers were full of people this year especially. So the Muslims are responding properly to this open attack. And this attack was timed so the, we would respond right on or around 911. Indeed. Again, I say we should choose our time and our method of challenge and response to these criminal people. Indeed. Well, on that note, due to time restrictions, I have to leave it there. Many thanks to Abdul Ali Musa, Imam of Masjid al Islam in Washington. Thanks for your time there, sir.